So right now we're going to talk about a, a sick, 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 sick movie called <laughs> The Human Centipede, or now because there's three other sequels to it, it's called Human Centipede First Sequence. It was made in 2009 and it was written and directed by a sick bastard named Tom. <laughs> The movie was set in Germany, but it, it, it's supposed to be, uh, I mean, sorry, it, it was set in Germany, but it, it was shot in the Netherlands. So this movie is about a mad scientist that kidnaps and mutilates a trio of tourists in order to reassemble them into a human centipede created by stitching their mouths to each other's rectums. That sounds like a uh, great log line here. Um, before I pass it on to you guys and your thoughts of this, this sick and twisted movie, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, the original concept made by this nut jobs uh, head, it arose from a joke he made with friends about pu punishing a child molester by stitching his mouth to the anus of a proverbial, and I quote, fat fuck uh, truck driver. And, <laughs> uh, the doctor in it, the uh, Dr. Hater, which this guy was actually a, a method actor. He kind of like stayed in character on set, off set throughout the six weeks or whatever amount of uh, shooting. And I think, he, I think he died. So but he was a great character. His, his character. He died? Yeah. His character was, was based off of uh, a Nazi surgeon. And I think his name was uh, Joseph Mengele. And Mandela. He was, yeah, he was from an Auschwitz uh, concentration camp. So, uh, without further ado, I know this is your favorite movie, Rob. You love this stuff. We're going to kick it off to you since you love it so much. Uh, I actually don't love this movie. Uh, <laughs> it, it took me two, two times to even finish it. I initially started watching it when I was 15 years old with my friends, and we were stoned off our asses watching this film, and I thought it would be cool because it was my idea to watch it. I didn't actually know what it was about. And as soon as he started showing the people the diagrams, what he was going to do to them, I was like, peace, guys. And I just bounced. So I didn't finish that movie for 14 years after I started it. And then I actually finished it. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I like it. I think, it's, I think it's well made. I think it's super creepy. Um, it's a scary idea. The first 30 minutes of the movie are pretty bad. Um, the women walking through the woods – and just being ridiculous, dumb, ditzy, blondes. And then when they go looking for something, who, like, car breaks down and then just walks off into the middle of the fucking woods? That's retarded. Sorry, yeah. that's mentally challenged. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That's absurd. And then they just walk out in heels into the woods while it's raining. No, you walk down the road. That's so to be dumb. fair, she complained several times that she was not going to get out of the broken down car on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere because she had heels on. Which, that part seemed ridiculous to me. It did. It did. Also, there's a YouTuber called uh, George Rockwell Schmidt, who has a pretty funny video called uh, The Human Centipede Lost Me. He's another guy who reviews horror movies. And he could not get over how Dr. Hader had a plaque made of his dead three-in-one Rottweilers. Because, like, who made that plaque? Did he make it himself? Did he order it out? How could that plaque have been made? I gotta tell you, I'm like... That that doesn't break the, break the fabric of the movie for me at all, but it might have for you guys. I don't know. He was proud. He was proud of his creations. This guy. That's yeah. But, but did he make the plaque? It was so good. It got a four point four on IMDb. That's how good this movie was. It should have gotten higher than that. Yeah, horror movies have a break five. Nah, I think this movie is a solid six five seven. I think it. What it means, tries to do, it does extremely effectively, which is get under your skin and gross you out and make you talk to your friends about it. And the acting isn't amazing, but some of it's actually quite good, particularly the Japanese lead guy I think is good, and uh, the doctor. The doctor's great. And even the girls, like, when she's crying at the end, spoiler, she's stuck in the middle of the human centipede, getting it from both ends, just horrible. Her back end dies. Her front end kills himself for some reason. And she's crying. That's like borderline tragic. That scene like kind of hurt me. I'm watching the film after I'd gotten over the hump of disgust. I was actually really sympathetic to her character and I was sad. I thought this movie was tragic. So I would give it like a seven. And fun fact, Roger Ebert actually could not even score this film. 
he watched it and he wrote a review and he said, I'm sorry, this movie did what it tried to do and it did it very effectively. I can't even give it a star, no stars, anything. I can't rate this film. And I don't know of any other film he did that with. That's so weird. Right? It makes no sense to me. <laughs> because he hated Hellraiser. Yeah. I fuck him. Well, he, he kind of changed later on in his career and started giving horror movies a fair shake. Anthony, what did you think of it? All right, so <laughs> this this movie was not a mainstream type horror movie that, you know, went into theaters and oh, all that shit. So when when this movie came out, I was impressed immediately before I saw it because so many people actually knew about it. And this was the talk. People were like, you got to see Human Centipede. It's fucking sick. I'm like, okay. And after I watched it, I'm just like, I was actually very impressed because when you have a new idea that's fucking sickening as sick as this movie <laughs> is, I love it to the extreme because it's never been done. It's a brand new, fresh idea of horror. And seeing some of the scenes like, when they're outside and he's eating the dog food and then everyone's shitting in each other's mouth. It's just horrifying. And you know, at the end of the day, when this movie's over, who the fuck is going to live through all this shitting in the mouth? <laughs> no yeah. one. Way to put it lightly, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shit all right, we'll go hey, De to Devin, did you like this movie? I, I mean, this is totally up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was my least favorite of the four. Um, and I think it was because of what you were saying, Rob, was that I, it's funny that you found it sympathetic because at no point was I sympathetic toward any of these characters. I think everyone was an asshole and, the, and they set them up to be that way purposely, maybe because assholes, who knows? Um, <laughs> oh, oh, wow. There's, this movie symbolic. There's a reason why the first scene, some, there's an asshole and someone is shitting. <laughs> well, yeah, it's gotta be, right? It's gotta be. Which one did you like more? I know we're not supposed to talk about it, but the second one, full sequence. Did you guys like the first movie more or less than the second movie? No, I thought the I second actually, one was easily the best one. Yeah, it yeah was. I didn't see the third one. The third, the third one, one was trash. The third one, they're all in prison, and there's there's like a, of two hundred men of one big human centipede of all the prisoners. Well, but, it comes. It comes. Well, actually, the second one's called Full Sequence. The but. second one is even more disgusting because it, it's based off of a real a real true story. There there was a fan who like kept emailing uh, that guy Tom Six, the director. And he was stalking him, and he, he got the idea of, like, what if a fan actually saw this movie? Uh, it, so the second movie kind of breaks the fourth wall of the first movie, and it, it shows that Human Centipede 1 is a film, and this guy's obsessed with it, and he tries to make his own Human Centipede. And it's actually more disgusting because he's not a doctor, so he does it in these weird ways. He uses like a hammer and it's just, it's so gross. Oh, the staples and, oh man. I gotta tell you, it was less gross for me than the first movie. Or maybe because it was black and white, but well, Lawrence R. Harvey let me acts his heart out in this film. Is it, and, black, is it black and white because like, so it didn't get like an X rating because it was so graphic? I mean, I, I was just yeah, I, like, they, the I think it was shot black and white on purpose because yeah. I, I, it's it's actually a very stylistically like nice looking film um, in a lot of scenes and there's also spoiler alert uh, shit flies out and hits the camera in splatters in one scene which is I mean this movie goes for it and, and it makes it funnier when I thought this movie was funny. Did you find the first one funny? Did no. I? Oh, you did. Not. Me? You I found it funny. funny. I don't think I did. Did you? <laughs> it's funny to talk about. Like the South Park was funny, <laughs> but the, the movie's not funny. The second one is funny though. No, it's not. And, yeah, it is. The second one's very funny, especially at the end when he's he's getting them all to like to pass, but it doesn't work, and they just fart real loud. And then this guy's like waving his arms in the air like a circus performer. He 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 puts on the persona of a lion tamer. And they even have circus music. This is actually a really great scene. They have the circus music while he's <laughs> waving his arms around and the human centipede is going around him in a circle. Hmm. But I mean, the whole movie's absurd. You have all these people with their 
arms and legs duct taped in a warehouse. I mean, I could have gotten out of that by myself very easily. And if there was another person there to help me, I would have wiggled out of there in like five minutes. And he's not there for like a whole day. That's absurd. The whole thing is totally it's absurd. Imp- it's just impressive he got to do this to that many people. <laughs> yeah, but since it's a dream sequence, it's all forgiven, which I think this makes it one of the most successful it was all a dream type films. You know what I do like in the in the first movie? I, I'll give it this. I, I hate the rest of the movie, but I, I like that when she escapes him and she jumps in the pool and the pool cover starts coming over her and she like tries to hold her breath as much as she as long as she can and the pool cover actually goes over her head. It's very like claustrophobic. And I like that like she then she finally gets out of the pool when he, he runs out and She's, like, trying to get her friend to leave. She's dragging her friend who's, like, all drugged up out of the house. And he shoots her. And, like, it's a cool reveal because when, like, the the camera goes on him and it shows that it's a dart gun. Or it shows on her that it's a dart. And she, he wasn't trying to kill her the whole time. Like, his whole intention was to make her part of the centipede. And I love that he actually calls people the next day to get the glass fixed, which is, like, really weird and but funny i guess that's a funny part of this sick twisted movie um yeah i kind of like that that really showed how helpless their situation was that they were right in the basement and he could just call people over to help out that scene in particular does give you the idea that tom six could very easily or not easily but is capable of making a good normal horror movie (laughs) i will say like the moment that got me was um when they have to crawl up the stairs because you could just feel mm. how hard that was going to be and how awful yeah. it would be. And by the time they get to the top, the amount of blood. And then the weirdest part of the entire movie that did not make sense at all was when the doctor licks the blood off of the floor. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's sick. He was just thirsty. That's cool. Yeah. He doesn't drink coffee, remember? He doesn't have time for coffee because he's a doctor who doesn't sleep. <laughs> there's something i mentioned last week that i want to mention this week is i said that in hellraiser 4 they have twin cops and i said i'd never seen that in a movie before the human centipede has two cops who look almost exactly the same so i guess there is a second movie with twin cops duly no that's cool can i give you guys my uh <laughs> my my idea for human centipede 4 yes, yes. <laughs> all right really quick Human Centipede 4, Rehabilitation. And it's about a surgeon that's in love with this girl and she's a drug addict. And he wants to have a baby with her and she keeps doing drugs so like they're never able to have, get her pregnant. So he finds her like one day overdosed when he comes home from work and he sends her to rehab. When he sends her to rehab, she meets a guy in the rehab and they have an affair and the guy gets her pregnant. Then the husband, who's a plastic surgeon, like he finds out that he's he got her pregnant, so he captures the both of them and he puts them down in the in the basement and he attaches them as a human centipede. But what he does is because they're both drug addicts, he gives he injects one with heroin and the other one with suboxone, and they start like withdrawing really bad. And there's like this scene where you see like them like shaking and it cuts to like a magnified glass, like hitting a, an actual centipede with like the, the sun. And then the big finale is, we're, we're gonna add like two or three more uh, people into the centipede, but the big finale is that one of the mouths is attached to her vagina and the baby goes through <laughs> out the entire centipede and is born and that's how the movie ends. What the fuck? <laughs> That was actually Chris pitching this film idea to our producer, Devin. (laughs) Make it Jigsaw and we'll make it the like next installment in Saw. Done. That's that's great. It will be uh, the the human Jigsaw centipede. It's like kind of marrying uh, Jigsaw and uh, and the human centipede. I say crossover. It's a revenge story and it's got a big finale. Because they haven't done that before. They haven't had the, you, the, the baby go through the whole centipede. 
Wait, so does it go out the vagina and then go through the man and goes out the asshole? Like, how does that work? I don't know. We could, <laughs> we could figure it out. We could get like a, a surgeon or something. It, it might not be 100% medically accurate, so we can't promote <laughs> it in the original movie. It should be tagline 5% medically accurate. Yeah, tagline, right. 5% medically accurate. <laughs> Zero <laughs> out of five doctors oh, recommend this film. <laughs> okay, I'm going to steal your thunder real quick and tell you my idea for you. God. It's called. It's it's different. It's not. It's not a sequel. It's called the Sapien Cephalopod, and I'm going to be the doctor in this scenario. So I'm going to take Devin. You're the you're the middle of my cephalopod. No, take why? Chris, and he goes <laughs> to your left, and his leg is stitched to your arm, and his head is stitched to his arm, and his other arm is stitched to your leg. Right. So between the two of you, you have six limbs, and then I'm going to take Anthony and stitch him to you, and his leg is stitched to your arm. And his head is stitched to his arm, and his his arm leg is stitched to your leg. So you're actually walking on both of their heads, and you have eight arms. When, when you edit this, can you please, like, show a drawing of whatever this <laughs> looks like? Yeah, I'll, I'll have Decky draw it. She drew this stuff for uh, the Midwicker episode. She's an excellent artist. And then, just to be gross, um, we're going to do that South Park thing, and you eat food up your butt and poop out your mouth. Oh, great. Right. Yeah, okay. Perfect. That's fine. Great, man. Circus <laughs> music from uh, right. Eyes Without a Face going. <laughs> exactly. It's it's the Sapien Cephalopod, and it's directed by Quentin Tarantino and produced by Devin Shepard. Hell, yeah. We have Human Centipede 4 and 5 in the theater <laughs> 2021 and 2022. All right. We're going to move on now in the podcast, and we're going to talk about our fourth and final movie. We are talking about Tusk. It was made in 2014. It was written and directed by one of my favorite directors, Kevin Smith, Mr. J and Silent Bob himself. Um, it stars Justin Long as this guy, Wallace Brighton. That's funny, Wally the Walrus, right? No, no pun intended. The movie was made in Canada for $3 million. It has Johnny Depp is in this movie, which is awesome. And it stars <laughs> Michael Parks as Howard, uh, Howard Howe. A Howie, you want to call it. That's actually the antagonist. Howie, Howard Howe, yeah. In this movie. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis. I don't know if Anthony, there he is. There he is. <laughs> Howard Howe, I thought Howard Howe got him. He like, Howie or Howe? Howe. I, I think it's Howard Howe. Howard. They call him Howie. Howie. Right. I'll yeah, call I think him so <laughs> the synopsis of this is when a podcast, a while, so basically, I don't need to read this crap. But the, <laughs> is, the guy has a podcasting show. And he does like really, he, he, uh, he gets people who do like this really bizarre shit on it. Yeah. Like this one kid, he cuts his own leg off. and The Kill Bill goes, kid. Yeah, he goes to like look for, for one of the stories and the, the kid that he's looking for ends up dying. Long story short, he gets into this maniac's house and the guy turns him into a walrus. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, this is probably a bizarre movie, but it's kind of, <laughs> I kind of like it. It's pretty badass, this film. I will, uh, instead of going to Rob, let's go to Anthony for this one. <laughs> Turn it on its head. It's just so fucking funny. <laughs> like, the whole concept of it is just so funny, but, like, that's Kevin's humor. But uh, at the same time, it is terrifying. Um, when he's sitting in the room with Mr. Howe and they're talking, I knew instantly whatever he gave him was going to knock him out. I just just had that idea that was definitely going to happen. But um, what really got me, even though this was a great film, making a person to a walrus, <laughs> was how did he do it medically? Like, how did he get him so fat? And then, like, what, what, like when you look at it, everything is, like, so individually. So did this guy have, like, 20 bodies in his house lying around that he just took different skin and just – put it all together that was the part that was confusing the shit out of me what do you guys think like, about that i think he was like buffalo billing it you know because he had like 20 something victims and he just kind of made a walrus skin suit instead of a woman's suit it's, it's more progressive in that yeah. way but there's two suits too so yeah it's an insane amount right, of yeah. skin. Also, he's not a doctor, right? This was the this was a big question for me. Is no. How did how did he physically do it? What was his brother? Know. What was what was his occupation? He he got saved by the walrus. They, that's like the whole 
the whole his whole uh, backstory, right? What do you mean? That yeah. was his occupation. He was in the war. He was a vet. Yeah, when he was like 20, though. But at this point, he's in his 60s. So there's like he was 40 like, years unaccounted for. Yeah, he was in the kitchen in the war. So he wasn't even fighting. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he had an ice cream stand somewhere. Who the fuck knows? All right, so he had an ice cream stand. <laughs> and <laughs> they buy a walrus called Mr. Tusk. And he ends up ki- eating the walrus and killing him like seconds before he's rescued. So he has like this obsession with this Mr. Tusk. And then he turns Justin Long into this big walrus. Thing. <laughs> okay, I, I got to talk about how this movie was made. Because you guys probably know. Kevin Smith has a podcast called Smodcast. Mm-hmm. In which um, he was kind of, he got a letter from a guy who was willing to rent a room for someone who dressed like a walrus and acted like a walrus. Because he missed his friend with the walrus so much. Then him and his co-host kind of spun this idea. They just pitched it back and forth for Tusk. Fast forward about two years, the movie's made and pretty much verbatim what they discussed on the podcast, which is why I think the sapien cephalopod is going to come out in two years. So excited. Boy, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, I, I brought paraphernalia. I'm just going to use that segue uh, of the sequel that I got on premiere night, but I just wanted to show the, the ad inside of the comic book. That's awesome. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's so cool. I just wanted, I wanted to share. <laughs> I'm, I'm such a Kevin Smith fangirl too. I love him. You know, he has the secret stash in Red Bank, New Jersey, right next to the town where I grew up in Tinton Falls. I was just there last week. I, it's cool. Yeah, and I actually, I went and I shot uh, a spec commercial there for Stella Artois, which will probably end up on our channel at some point because it came out pretty good. So I went there and all the guys from the Secret Stash television show, which I'm not sure if it's still on the air, do work in that place. And you can go in there and just chat with them. They're normal guys. They're extremely cool. And I got to kind of say, like, Kevin Smith's comic book shop gave me a location for free, and that's how I was able to make my short film commercial. And so Kevin Smith... You're the dude. He's a great supporter. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw this, but the uh, Kill Bill footage, the Kill Bill Kid footage from Tusk was actually shot by students at a film school, I believe. Wow. That makes oh, sense. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Because it know. didn't look real. <laughs> 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 they said that uh, his daughter and I think Johnny Depp's daughter, they, they played like the two girls in the store. Which is cool. So he always like puts his friends, family, everybody in it. He I, I, is he a good guy? Does anybody like ever like meet him? Or, like know about him? He seems I like mean, a I mean, he movie. runs a comic book shop that they let me shoot him for free. So yeah, he's gotta be. I want it would make me sleep better at night if I knew he was a nice man. <laughs> I think the amount that uh, he loves his daughter and his wife and how much he like supports them in their lives shows me that he's a good, at least dad. Right. And, which I hope translates to a good person. He, would he ever yeah. make a walrus out of somebody? I hope. Uh, no, I, I honestly, I think he would do go more for the centipede route. I think, uh, you know, the walrus. He's plugging away, man. He yeah. plugging the movie. <laughs> he's, he's never had bad media when you think about it. No, and he's got to be a nice guy because Justin Long's character is like very self-deprecating because he's an insult comic with the podcast who gets turned to a walrus. And throughout the film, he really strives to make you unsympathetic to him. Like, to lengths way further than in the other movies we've discussed tonight. Doesn't Justin Long's character is a P.O.S. to the extreme. He doesn't I mean, do, but were you, were you guys even upset about Justin Long turning into a walrus? You know, I have one major criticism of this film, and it's that as far as medical surgical horror goes, there's really no scenes of surgery. And I would have liked it more if there were some funny scenes of surgery, which I think no, I'm saying has like, been done. No, I'm saying, like, were you upset, like, as him as the character, now he's like a walrus? No, I wanted to see him get operated on to turn into a walrus. I didn't feel bad for him because I felt like he was a shit person anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. That being said, you really shouldn't turn anyone into a walrus, no matter how deplorable their character is. Fuck him. Turn into an elephant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're, one of those, you're one of those incels that is like, let's recreate the third Human Centipede movie for real. That's you, man. <laughs> oh, Devin. Devin, this is good. Can you talk about the subtext and the uh, uh, the, the theory of uh, the Human Centipede and the alt-right? Oh, yeah. Rob and I were talking about this a lot. Um, I mean, I, I found it so interesting that, first of all, the 
film is a German doctor, like you guys were saying, is based off of the Auschwitz character, um, which if we compare it also to Eyes Without a Face, yes, that was also made by people who went through the war as well. So I feel like, and, and Tusk takes, the character went to war. And so I, all of these movies have these ties with World War II, which is so interesting. I mean, Human Centipede, also the characters are American, German, and Japanese. And everything is based on this whole Nazi. And, and throughout all the movies, they say Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. I mean, the podcast in Tusk is called The Nazi Party. Everything goes back right. to the, the alt, right. Right. <laughs> By basing it on history, though, too, which is so horrifying. Well, the original <laughs> on, his, on history. Exactly. And I got to give it to you. I totally missed that it was an American, German, and Japanese centipede. I didn't even realize that. It took me a sec. I, I did a little. I did a little research. I was like, "Wait, how did they travel? And who was involved? Where? I know nothing about the war." <laughs> yeah, that's cool too. Because because uh, Ebert missed that part when he was talking about the centipede. He said they only cast the Japanese guy. He said, "I guess to like reach Asian audiences." No, there was an actual reason for it. I mean, a, a reason aside from marketing, there was a symbolic reason. Like one one of my favorite parts in in Tusk is when he draw the uh justin long falls into the water and he actually sees a a dead uh uh what do you call it another um what's a walrus right another walrus yeah, yeah in the water yeah. it kind of reminded me of that scene when christopher walken in batman returns falls in the water and he sees the clown that's dead all oh, right i don't know why it made me think of that but it, it was just cool that like he saw this this walrus and it was like more to worry about it's like what's gonna happen to me but I guess when, once you go full war, it, it doesn't really matter anymore. And uh, <laughs> I love the ending when he takes his, yeah. his tusk, he stabs him in the feet, and then he keeps jabbing him until he's dead. And, and Yeah, then, like, I got to tell you, Kevin Smith should have went further with that scene. It wasn't bloody enough. This movie should have been bloodier. That's I feel like it was a little unfocused. It should have been more gross and more bloody, and the humor should have been drawn more from that than just – Kevin Smithisms of like let's make fun of Canadians and hockey and stuff because the I parts wish, I uh, wish that, but sorry to cut you off no oh I I was gonna say like I agree with you it could have gone further but I think Kevin Smith was so scared after Red State being a complete failure that I right that was before a Tusk it was yeah it was right yeah. before yeah. Um, unless you guys liked it but I don't think it I don't think it did very well I heard it was good I, I, didn't, seen I it. didn't like it well, isn't Yoga Hosers a movie, too? Yeah. Yeah, it's supposedly awful. It's, <laughs> it's a little awful, but it's it's the sequel, and I I don't know. It's fun. But it's Is it a sequel to a Tusk? Yeah, no, yeah. There's like three movies to it, right? Oh, God. I, think I gotta watch it now. Yeah. I don't um, know. I, I love movies, Kevin Smith. Some of his movies, in my opinion, have fallen flat. I was a big fan of his. I didn't like the last Jay and Silent Bob movie that came out, like, last year. It just... It just didn't have the same pizzazz as like the 2001. Yeah. It, that was I like couldn't get through five movies. minutes. Huh? I shut it off after five minutes. It was awful. Yeah, it's like uh, Jay has like a daughter, and I, it just wasn't that like mm -hmm. funny. But I, I know I'm going off topic, but since we mentioned no, it's, movie, it's funny. I just I really wish in Tusk that they would have at least shown some of the medical shit going into it of him turning into a walrus. Exactly. Yeah. They, I wanted to see them shove those tusks in his face. Yeah. And I also, I really want to see him without the walrus suit on. What did he look like? I agree. Where <laughs> does his body end and the walrus begin? Yeah. Was it like stitched <laughs> onto him? Because like they didn't even take it off him when like he was a walrus at the end of the movie, which I, I agree with Chris. I think that's my favorite part of the movie at the end when they give him the fish. In the Smodcast, that scene is verbatim. They explain that word for word the way it happens, even with the funny song afterwards. It's all like lighthearted and shit. Oh, God. That part was the worst part for me. I know, Anthony, you were saying, like, at any point, do you feel sympathy for Wallace? And no, until they feed him that fish. Because I'm, I'm thinking he's still a human. He still has human taste buds. He's not a full what do you mean? Walrus. I completely agree what with you. you. That's the one scene. Wait, Devin, you never had sushi? 
<laughs> scales on and like just rip it apart oh my god uh, i felt really bad for him at the end when he was like crying he's like Aah. and his and his girlfriend what the hell is her name uh ali was crying and then the kid from uh the sixth <laughs> sense was there <laughs> the kid from the sixth sense who gave a brilliant performance throughout this movie by the way Oh wait, actually wait, I have actually just reminded me of something. Who when you watch this thought that Justin Long's uh, girlfriend was fucking the kid from the six the sixth sense? Yeah. That happens. Right? Yeah, that happens in the movie. That happens in the movie. Yeah. No, but like like what did you think it immediately? Oh. Like, you no, know, that was a reveal. No. That was surprising when I found out. No, like as soon as you see that first scene with Justin Long on the bed with her before he leaves to go. Yeah. I kind of got the vibe that oh. something could be going on with his friend. There is actually a fan theory that she has, was dead the entire movie and uh, he was the only one who was able to see it, hence the kid from The Sixth Sense. I just made that up. <laughs> that's that's uh, awesome. like I want to uh, hear more. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, last question. I just want to wrap it up on this question is, uh, what do you think was a better movie? Do you like Human Centipede or Tusk? Oh, uh, ooh, I, Human Centipede 2? Can I say that one? No, you can't. The first right, one. Tusk. <laughs> Tusk is way better than the Human Centipede, but it's not fair because it has like quadruple the budget and it's spoofing the other movie. Oh, come on. You can't compare budgets. Yeah, but I mean, on a technical level, like Tusk was so much better looking than the Human Centipede. No, and it had so so much better like star power in it. You know, just from that point of view, it's like it's not even a fighting chance. But the Human Centipede too, I think, is better than both. Okay, no answer from you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Anthony, what do you, what do you think? Um, I definitely liked Human Centipede better. I felt like it was more realistic. Yeah. Okay. And disgusting. Fair yeah. Point. And, uh, with our guest, the final answer, Devin, what do you think? Oh, Tusk. It's definitely one of my favorite movies, though I am biased because I love Kevin Smith, but <laughs> definitely Tusk. Okay. So between the pair of movies, what's your favorite? Tusk. No, between all four movies. Tusk. <laughs> really? Oh, do you like Tusk more than The Skin I Live In? I, I'll have to say... Uh, yeah, I, it's just, it has, holds a special place in my heart. The Skin I Live In, more terrifying. Okay, that's fair. I, the Skin I Live In is my favorite movie of this bunch. Eyes Without a Face. That's, that's the best one. Um, yeah, I think I, think I agree. Good. Eyes Without a Face. All um, right, we have a winner, guys. <laughs> Do we get a free t-shirt? What do we get? <laughs> uh, you guys get no eyes and a face. That's the win. All right. This well, is our prize. Uh, <laughs> God, that's gross. Oh, man. Well, that concludes our podcast. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Devin, for joining us today. Um, next week, we're going to be doing part one of Anthony's top 10 countdown of dolls. So this guy is, is a sick son of a bitch below me. And he knows <laughs> all movies. You got to see this guy's room. It's filled with them. It's, it's freaky. It's scary. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be giving away another free T-shirt uh, this week. So stay tuned to our Instagram at uh, Pod from the Crypt to find out more. Uh, please like, subscribe to our channel, comment on the section below. Tell us what you liked, what you disliked. If Rob's mustache looked like the guy from Top, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, thank you, everybody, and we will see you next week. Smell you later. <laughs>